Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today, we're rejoining one of my favorite tales that we've been doing, piecemeal, for quite some time. And while we won't finish it this week, we will come tantalizingly close to completing Blondine. Now, if you haven't been keeping up to date on your Folktale Project listening, you may have missed the first few entries into this story. And if you have, pause now, head over to folktaleproject.com, search for French Folklore, and get caught up with Blondine. Because we're about to dive back in. As you recall from the last episode, we've left Blondine just about to enter the new castle in the Forest of Lilacs with Bon Mignon. This is Bon Biche. Bon Mignon had entered by a little passage which seemed made expressly for him, and had probably given notice to someone at the castle as the gate opened without Blondine having called. She entered the courtyard but saw no one. The door of the castle opened of itself. Blondine entered the vestibule, which was of rare white marble. All the doors of the castle now opened like the first, and the princess passed through a suite of beautiful rooms. At last, in the back of a charming salon, furnished with blue and gold, she perceived a white hind, lying upon a bed of fine and fragrant grasses. Beaumignon stood near her. The pretty hind saw Blondine arose and approached her. You are most welcome, Blondine, said she. My son, Beaumignon, and I have expected you for a long time. At these words, Blondine was much frightened. Take courage, princess, you are with friends. I know the king, your father, and I love him, and I love you also. Oh, madam, said Blondine. If you know the king, my father, I pray you to take me to him. My absence must make him very wretched. My dear Blondine, said the hind, whose name was Bombiche, sighing, it is not in my power to conduct you to your father. You are in the hands of the magician of the forest of lilacs. I myself am subject to his power, which is superior to mine, but I can send soft dreams to your father which will reassure him as to your fate and let him know that you are safe with me. Oh, madam, said Blondine, in an agony of grief, shall I never see my father, whom I love so tenderly, my poor father? Dear Blondine, do not distress yourself as to the future. Wisdom and prudence are always recompensed. You will see your father again, but not now. In the meantime, be good and docile. Beaumignon and I will do all in our power to make you happy. Bondine sighed heavily and shed a few tears. She then reflected that to manifest such grief was poor recompense for all the goodness of Bombiche. She resolved, therefore, to control herself and to be cheerful. Bombiche took her to see the apartment they had prepared for her. The bedroom was hung with rose-colored silk embroidered with gold. The furniture was covered with white velvet worked with silks of the most brilliant hues. Every species of animal, bird, and butterfly were represented in rare embroidery. Adjoining Blondine's chamber was a small study. It was hung with sky-blue damask, embroidered with fine pearls. The furniture was covered with silver moire, adorned with nails of turquoise. Two Magnificent portraits, representing a young and superbly handsome woman and a strikingly attractive young man, hung on the walls. Their costumes indicated that they were of royal race. Whose portraits are these, madam? said Blondine to Bombiche. I am forbidden to answer that question, dear Blondine. You will know later, but this is the hour for dinner. Come, Blondine, I am sure you are hungry. Blondine was, in fact, almost dying of hunger. She followed Bonbiche, and they entered the dining room where she saw a table strangely served. An enormous cushion of black satin was placed on the floor for Bonbiche. On the table before her was a vase, 
filled with the choicest herbs, fresh and nutritious, near this vase was a golden bucket, filled with fresh and limpid water. Opposite Bon Biche was a little stool for Bon Mignon, while before him was a little porringer in gold, filled with little fried fish and thighs of snipes. At one side was a bowl of rich crystal, full of fresh milk. Between Bon Mignon and Bon Biche a plate was placed for Blondine. Her chair was of carved ivory covered with crimson velvet attached with nails of diamonds. Before her was a gold plate, richly chased, filled with delicious soup made of young pullet and fig birds. Her glass and water bottle were of carved rock crystal. A muffin was placed by her side, her fork and spoon were of gold, and her napkin was of linen finer than anything she had ever seen. The table was served by gazelles who were marvelously adroit. They waited, carved, and even divined the bushes of Blondine, Bonbiche, and Bon Mignon. The dinner was exquisite, the chicken was splendid, the game and fish most delicate, the pastry and bonbon superlative. Blondine was hungry, so she ate of all and found all excellent. After dinner, Bombiche and Bonmignon conducted the princess into the garden. She found there the most delicious fruits and lovely walks. After a charming walk, Blondine entered the castle with her new friends, much fatigued. Bombiche proposed that she retire, to which she agreed joyfully. Blondine entered her chamber and found two gazelles waiting to attend her. They disrobed her with grace and adroitness, placed her in bed, and seated themselves by her couch to watch over her. Blondine was soon peacefully asleep, not, however, without having first thought of her father, and wept bitterly over her cruel separation from him. And that is Bon Biche, the fifth part of the story of Blondine, Bon Biche, and Bon Mignon. And here we meet Bon Biche. And we're getting some hints to the conclusion of the tale here, but we won't speak further of it. Instead, let's just wait for Wednesday's portion, Blondine's Second Awakening. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget that if you'd like to help support the podcast, you can always head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject, where for as little as a dollar a month, you get early access to every story told and help support the podcast. As always, thank you so much for listening.